If I start telling people about hell, I might just scare them off. Where are you gonna scare them off to? Hell number two? Or are you just gonna sit there and let them burn? So Tom and Jared, how you doing? Hey, how you guys doing? Doing, doing, doing good, great. Great. how are you doing? Yeah, good to good to be on with you guys tonight. Thanks for having us. All right, sure thing. Great to have you, and I think we're gonna have a really interesting conversation here. So let's just get right into it. What what was your influence? I mean, I, I kind of it's pretty obvious, but I, I still want you to tell us what is your influence in doing this film. I've been wanting to do this film for over over eight years, and I got the idea originally to. Um, to make this film, but I, I wasn't really interested in the uh, evangelism aspect of it. I was more interested in the um, the idea that it was going to uh, frighten people, and I wanted to make mm. a movie that was going to frighten people. This was this was eight years ago when I first discovered uh, Russ Dizdar. I thought, wow! I said, you know, Hollywood makes movies about this all the time, but I've never heard any stories as frightening as what Russ Dizdar tells because his stories are real. Those are all made up stories. So I thought, mm. wow, we could, uh, we could make a movie here. And, and my idea was let's make a movie to scare people, you know? And I didn't know what I was getting into at the time. I just, you know, mm. I thought this guy's, this is a, you know, a credible guy. He, he seems like he's sane. He's not crazy and he's telling crazy stories. So I contacted Russ and I said, hey, I want to make a movie about the things you talk about. He got back with me and he said, if you want to make a movie, he said, research this. And then he'd send me stuff. And he said, research this. And he kept sending me stuff to research. Instead of making the movie, I began to work with him. And I began to take his courses and my life pretty much was flipped upside down. And mm. I, dove, I dove deeper into spiritual warfare and I just completely realigned my life with the scriptures and spiritual warfare and learned about the full armor, all the stuff I knew, but I never had any strategy. So I really learned how to apply it to my life. And I began to overcome things in my life and began to uh, get stronger and work, actually work with Russ Dizdar and go out on campus. That was never my intention but that's what happened. And then after so many years came back to the idea, I was like, this movie needs to get made. And I think I'm the person to do it now because I'm the one with the experience, you know, with Russ, you know, seeing this stuff firsthand. And I have a little bit of knowledge of how to make a film. So after a long, long time, uh, it happened. And, I, and, you know, it was the Lord that laid it on my heart. He, uh, there's no way I could have done it. He He commissioned it. He told me to do it. And I kept uh, testing, you know, him. And I'm like, Lord, are you sure? Are you sure you want me to do this? And he said, yes. And then I would check again. And I said, are you sure? And he would say yes again and yes again. So we did it uh, from start to finish. I got a hold of Jared. And I said, hey, I'm going to make this movie. He said, I'm going to support you. I'm going to help you do it. And uh, we did it. And we, uh, we did it with a very low amount of money. And we did it in a very um, quick amount of time. It was probably about... It was less than nine months from start to finish, and we did it with less than uh, $8,000 about, which is really cheap and really fast. But that's wow. just testi testimony to the Lord was involved in making this film. Right. Right. Great. Wow. Um, I'm amazed. So I, I see that the Lord had a, uh, had a plan all the time for your life when you thought you were just going to make a movie. He was going to um, basically change your life. Right. Yeah. Amazing. You know what? Um, you just started and you said something, and I think this will just sort of set the premise for what we'll be dealing with, what we'll be talking about tonight. We're going to just go into Ephesians. We're going to look at Ephesians, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to about, I would say, 18. And I'm going to read, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of this darkness of this world, against yeah. spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may, uh, you will be able to stand or withstand in the evil day, having done all, Stand, stand. Therefore, having 
your loins girded with truth, uh, and the truth is Jesus Christ, having the breastplate of righteousness, walking righteously, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, making sure that we are know the gospel, know how to share God's word. All, um, above all, taking the shield of faith, that's belief, and you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, is, which is the word of God. And you said something a while ago, the last part, you said, praying always with all power and supplication in the Spirit, and watching whereunto um, will all perseverance, uh, perseverance and supplication for all the saints. I think that that just sort of ties up the whole thing about what you're going to be talking about tonight, being fully prepared with the armor of the Lord. So continue sharing, my brother. Well, um, no, and that scripture in... Um in uh, Ephesians chapter six, I mean, we we could spend days just uh, tearing that down and looking at that and uh, analyzing it and learning so much from it. But I think about when I grew up, I started studying prophecy and started studying spiritual warfare when I was about twelve years old. But i I didn't really have a I didn't really have a teacher. I, I would I would read song lyrics and find songs about spiritual warfare. Then I w- I would study it and I would find it in the Bible and things like that. And there was always an element of fear in that before. And when I began studying with Russ, I, um, I began to learn that we have authority and we can come with boldness. Not that it there's, any, not there's, there's anything with us, but when we understand that uh, we have authority in Christ and the Spirit of God, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead uh, lives in us, and, he, you know, he's given us a badge of authority. I believe it's, um, what am I thinking, uh, Mark, is it Mark chapter 10? And, uh, Absolutely. Uh, snakes and scorpions, you know, uh, we trample on them. It doesn't say that we step on them or we kick them out of the way or we, we, we run around them. It says we trample on them. We trample on yeah. them. You know, and I used to just, uh, you know, what I would do, which is it's a powerful thing, but I would say it in fear. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ, you know. And that that's that's real, but I would say it in fear and not in boldness and not in power and not with any kind of victory. So um, I, I just, uh, you know, again, taking Russ's courses, things change for me, and uh, really beginning uh, to understand all of these spiritual warfare uh, scriptures, you know, and understanding uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 10, verse 4, uh, understanding... Um, you know, Old Testament scriptures, I think of uh, book, the book of Daniel when Daniel prayed and the angel was dispatched, but he got held up, you know, by the prince of Persia. And, you know, we, we wonder, you know, what holds our prayers up sometimes. So just having a, a big, you know, overview and understanding these things like never before. I always, um, when I meet new people, I always point them back to Russ's teachings. And, you know, there's a lot of great teachers out there. And Russ is just one of those teachers. And I mention him because he's a good teacher, and he has the, he has the gift of teaching. And um, his stuff is all free, that, you know, also. He used to charge 75 to to $100 for these courses that he gives away for free now. And these are like college-level courses. Some of them are 15 to 24 hours, and he gives notes with them. So I just mention that for anybody out there who's seeking, who wants to um, – you know, who wants to learn more, who wants to become strengthened. You know, the first course that I took was called um, Confronting the Powers. It's a free course on uh, shatterthedarkness.net. And I took that course, and that, that course was a game changer for me. I went into that course as a guy who would go through life and fight the devil and pretty much get beat up all the time. And then I'd go to sleep, you know, wake up the next day, and then get my, you know, butt all day long again. But when I finished that mm. course, I was the one kicking the butt after that. Mm. So because I learned the authority and I learned how to use the the weapons, you know, of my warfare. You know, they're not carnal, but mighty through the God, through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, taking captive every thought and making it obedient to Christ. So Amen. that's a scripture that I have to have memorized 
because when the enemy comes at me, when he attacks my imagination, when he attacks my mind, I've got to just be able to stand on that word of God. There's so much power in the scripture. So I got to be able to stand on that word of God and I got to remind him and I got to remind myself, this is the truth. Nothing can, um, you know, can move this truth. And uh, the weapons we fight with, you know, our power. If you like our videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all our frequent updates.